My name is Jacob Zachary Flanders. Oh, that's all I asked for. Huh? <laughs> Why did you join Brito? I have no idea. I have no idea. No, oh, I joined Brito because I had done theater in high school. A lot of the time it was incredibly restrictive and all filtered through a model of like authority. And, and then Brito was a space that felt like a theatrical, creative, collaborative space that offered an alternative to that. And, and I just, it just seemed like crazy. Like the energy just seemed like cr way crazier and like weirder and more eccentric than these other uh, yeah, theater groups. Tessa Rudnick and I graduated from Vassar in 2019. So I was a part of the Brito Martis Theater Ensemble for three years from when I was a sophomore to when I was a senior. I first I first found out about Brito Martis when I went to see Biowadis. The show was performed three times uh, in a row by the cast. It, uh, over the course of three separate rooms. So the audience saw uh, a piece of the show at a time and moved through the rooms. And at that time, I had never, ever encountered theater like that. So watching it at 18 years old, I knew that that it was something really special. It, it blew my mind. Yeah, I liked that I felt like there was space for everyone to have their own individual expression coming from like directly them, but then also like facilitating other people's expression to me felt good. To me, what who comes to mind is Ling Yi. <laughs> It began uh, my, my journey in Brill Martis to create this show called Switchboard Dialogue. Um, and in that show, I get to write about my own story. I get to uh, re reconcile with myself, with my past self, and to, um, you know, to wave some of my Chinese international cultural background into the narrative of Western theater. I can feel the brightness of the sunlight, the shining, sparkling little beams of it. I, I felt eyes. I felt in control as an international student. Um, unlike in most of my classes where I, f I found myself to be the only Asian face sitting in the room, um, or I felt like a sidekick. Uh, a foreigner in the production meetings, but no, it's not. It's not the same at Brittle. At Brittle, I could like voice for my ideas. I could employ them. I could communicate with other fellow theater makers, and I could have so much fun while doing theater. I that really reflected my and my Brittle fellows' uh, creativity. Hi. What was like one of your proudest moments with Brito Martis? Um, oh gosh, I have to think because there's so many like exciting moments. Mm -hmm. Um, I think like the proudest moments were usually like pulling the show together. <laughs> like that moment where you like you realize like, oh wait, we actually have a show. <laughs> I think that the thing that I'm proudest of is the fact that we we start the semester with nothing maybe a word you know maybe a text a book uh, and then we end the semester with a full production and every single semester I've been in Brito Martis people are convinced this is gonna be it this is gonna be the time that we don't get a show on. Like, what were you most proud of from your experience with Brito? I, I was proud of the show we put on, but I was almost more proud just having, like, making it to opening night and us being like, we have a show. 
Yeah. You know, because the process was. She has a boyfriend now who's in his early 90s. He wants to take her up in a hot air balloon. After dinner, we discuss deportation, the camps, the final solution. She told stories I've heard before. I and I was proud of putting something into the show that I had written that felt personal um, and revealing almost. So yeah, we both joined as first years. I really looked up to the older members of Brito Mm Mardis. And also with like uh, queerness Mm -hmm. and the fact that I was not able to understand or own that part of me at all yet. So like I really looked up to these like hot gay juniors and seniors who were like incredible artists and incredible people. Yeah, and I looked up to Eleanor and was like, whoa, Eleanor's like really like free in the way like she like creates. As with mourning, it begins with denial. You You are are not what you are. are. How can I make a body for myself out of negations? A body is more than the antithesis of everything it's not, is it not? You You are what you are not. When I think about that, I'm like, well, then we became like good friends too, outside of that. So that was part of it. Like, far and away, one of the most brilliant artists I've ever been. Yeah, and I'm like, I still, to this day, am doing some, I'll be doing something creative, and I'm like, I wish I had L, L to, like, the original push me a little. The rotting of my spirit and confined me in a prison of soft flesh, stretched thin over foamy knuckles. Um, yeah, like, L and Eliana, especially, really looked up to those people. Yeah. did you see Brittany tonight? Were you thinking you were Brittany with the side of <laughs> no, bro, I started chortling with the South Wharton Warblers. <laughs> well, while you were chortling with the South Wharton Warblers, she totally did a keg stand, and it was trout rageous for a potato crisp. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I've never said it, but don't you already know? I guess what I'm trying to say is, I want to see myself as a little house floating on a river, but you're the river. I don't know, I just I mean, felt like I was living in their world just a I little bit, and is, I loved it. All I want is to sit in this field with you, little cow. This field I built in my mind. Yeah. Like, I I was just so in awe of those people and deeply in love with both of them. I wonder if I'll cut that out. It was good for me too then to also be like, wait, I'm my own, you know. Yep. I'm yeah. my own person, of course. To know that we were, like we were like artists in the same space, exactly. And that it was about all of us showcasing what we had to say. I'm gonna trust you now, Mr. Monster Man. I like your furry monster chest. I, I want to run my hands through your furry monster hair and twirl it around like spaghetti. And I like your monster heart that goes boom, boom, boom. Sometimes so loud that you can't think clearly. I love, I do, I love you. So do you feel like a sense of continuity, like between you joining and what Brito, like what you saw Brito become? Yes and no, I would say. I think the essence of Brito was always there, and I don't think that was something that was ever lost, like the the vibes, yeah. <laughs> but like the soul and the heart and the essence, um, like the creative energy was always present and kind of the care and support for each other Hmm. and that community aspect I think was always there and I feel like that's the most important part (laughs) that was the most important part of Brito I think what was tricky and what was lost at points was wielding that energy Uh um, and like full following through on the creation of ideas um, and I think like with the pandemic and it's not that we ever lost that like love or care or energy or essence of the creative energy of the org, but I think the pandemic was almost this perfect storm, um, at least in my opinion, for like us 
kind of struggling to like follow through. Were you in Brito that COVID semester? No. Yeah, because you didn't come to Puerto Rico with me. Oh yeah, yeah, you guys went to Puerto Rico. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so we made it. <laughs> trying to process the world ending it, or whatever. So were we. Yeah, in Puerto <laughs> Rico. <laughs> um, it's like we're young and we're hot and we're in Puerto Rico, right? <laughs> I might have to cut this out, but one of our last days in Puerto Rico, Eliana was like, Am I ever gonna see you again? Yeah. Straight up thought they were joking. Yeah. Like, and I mean, it made like, me sad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it made me sad. It felt like some kind of goodbye. Mm -hmm. I just didn't realize it would be like that kind of goodbye. Yeah. Oh, hello, Yana. What seems to be the problem today? I don't know. I mean, no, that's not entirely true. Like, it's not like not not true. I just, I don't know. Well, that's just ghastly news, absolutely ghastly. How did this come about? It's happening again. It's happening right now. I'm just feeling really trapped. Um, would you like me to tell you what I think? It sounds like you're feeling trapped. <laughs> <laughs> I just said that. Don't you? You just said... Yeah, I just think it's it's really hard to create something, but it's um, it's really easy to destroy it. Kind of just makes me want to scream. Some of the people who were who we were just talking about were who were juniors when we joined. Um, I I didn't even have closure saying goodbye to them as just people outside of the context of Brito because it was COVID. If Brito didn't continue, um, like how would it feel to be one of the last Brito Martians? Um, I think bittersweet. I think, I think bittersweet, I don't know. I think it's hard, hard to, in some ways, visualize what it could be. It wouldn't necessarily be the Brito that I had known. So in some ways, I feel like there is an end. Um, Sometimes I also kind of feel like what I knew is Brito Martis is gone, you know? Like, yeah. I, you know, I knew it as those people, most of whom have moved on. When... The group of people changes every single semester. It it's it's hard when you're on a college campus. The the people that have been in whatever group you're a part of have only been there for usually maximum four years. And I think that that is what can be really, really exciting and fresh and new and generative and hard because you don't have access to the lessons that you, that your group wants to know. Yeah, I think that Brito is the perfect space for that energy. And I think that's the beauty of it, that it is always changing. And so even if this is the end of it, as we have known in some way, every year is almost an end. <laughs> like yeah. you said, um, a new end of the way it was because it is constantly changing, which I think is very beautiful. And I think leaves some more hope. In that, so in that case, how does it feel to be one of the last Brito Martians? I'm like a dinosaur. Yeah. I'm like a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, it feels sad because I want something, I want there to be a space like Brito because I think the other theater troops do great things, but they don't do what Brito does or had the potential to do. If any one of us wasn't there, the show would be different.
So we all pitched in. And that doesn't mean we never got in fights. We had lots of arguments, lots of creative differences because we cared deeply about what we were doing. We pushed each other to be better, to make more interesting art. We weren't necessarily gentle with each other all the time because we wanted what we were working on to be good and to matter. I haven't encountered it before or since. Um, just a group of people that is so ravenously invested in the art that we were creating. And, and I think we, we turned out some, some pretty special pieces of art.